I got to ask you, is Jed York serious about winning the Super Bowl or winning a Super Bowl period? Because if you go back and you look at the 49ers during his run, the reason that they have not won a Super Bowl can be traced back to one position and it's quarterback. And in order to get to win a Super Bowl, he's going to need to get that position right. And I think Lamar Jackson makes sense for the 49ers for that reason. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think Lamar Jackson makes a ton of sense for the 49ers themselves, and it definitely would be a way of showing that you are serious about the quarterback position. I think one thing that York has done a decent job of, especially since he went from the Harbaugh era and now over to the Shanahan era, is that he's kind of just like, hey, you guys are the football guys. I'm out of it. You figure it out. I got two two guys in, in Lynch and Shanahan that can work together cohesively. I'm trusting what you guys do in your football decisions. Go out and, and do what it takes to win type of situation versus before it's like, okay, we had Bulky and we had Harbaugh who don't agree at all. Now I've got to play middleman. I've got to pick and choose. It just put them in an awkward situation. So I think to answer the question, Jed York is probably serious about winning a Super Bowl, maybe more so than he's ever been. And I think he's shown that through his actions of allowing Shanahan and Lynch to handle things. I just think that maybe, and I'm sure Lynch and Shanahan are serious as well, but they just haven't put the exclamation mark on the team and saying, this is the route to win. We need a quarterback. We're deciding right now this is who it is, and this is who we're dumping all of our resources, resources into. Getting Lamar Jackson certainly would change that narrative very quickly. Yeah, and I think that's it's a move that they have to make. If you if you or they I don't know if they have to make it. I think they need they should make it if they want to win a Super Bowl. You know, we're going in we're looking at a, an off season right now where well, we know that right now the Fires don't have a quarterback on the roster that's healthy. Trey Lance is going to be healthy by the time we start in a couple months, but we know that right now they don't have a healthy quarterback. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with Brock Purdy. Uh, no matter how well he people think he played or not, I think you go after a guy that's been an MVP. If he's sitting there for you, he's he's right there for you, and all it's going to take is some money. And Georgia and Jed just needs to be able to spend it. And, and I think the other main thing here is you have a lot of people. I see a lot where Prague Marathe gets gets a lot of credit for certain things about this roster. He needs to get up and he needs to show that he's worth that whole thing. You know, as far as the cap guru nickname and all this stuff, he needs to earn his money now. Yeah, this, this whole thing is going to get interesting because if the 49ers decide to insert themselves into this Lamar Jackson Lamar Jackson situation, then it's going to take more than just money, unfortunately, because they don't have a first-round pick. So two things can happen for the 49ers to actually get Lamar Jackson. One, they can hope that the rest of the league doesn't bite on Lamar early and they can make an offer, a serious offer, after the draft, because now all of a sudden they do have a first round pick next year and they would qualify under the tender options that it takes to get him. Or they can work out a deal with the Ravens aside from that and say, hey, we don't have the first round picks. But what we do have is a young quarterback who's very inexpensive that we believe could do some great things for y'all. And we have X players we could give you Debo we could you know whoever that player is Debo and then we can give you next year's first round pick and then we'll pay Lamar we'll take it off your hands we're giving you your future quarterback we're giving you a bona fide superstar and we're giving you a first round pick how does that sound that those are the two ways that they can go about getting Lamar Jackson but they can't do it right now just by offering him the most money and getting him to sign a deal because they don't have a first round pick this year no, the only, the only way the foreigners can do it right now is if they do it as a sign and trade. That's mm -hmm. not coming from me. I'm not the smart guy there. That's uh, that's coming from Bill Barnwell from ESPN. He's the first one that I saw that put that out. So I want to make sure that he gets the credit for the, being the first to, that I saw as far as reporting that. So they can, they can go ahead and do a sign and trade with, with uh, Baltimore. The way that I look at it is uh, one of the ways that you can do this if you want to do a sign and trade is – if you do it after March 15th, now you can use your 2025 first round draft pick. So if you want, you can use 2024 and 2025, you know, as one way. Or 
maybe it's not going to take two first round picks after all. Maybe it's going to maybe for the Ravens it's going to take a player and two two first. I don't know. But what you know, with the way that I look at it is, if you're willing, if you're going to be bringing in Lamar Jackson, you one of your pieces, you trade them a first round quarterback. You trade them Trey Lance. You give them Trey Lance. You give them maybe two first round picks plus Trey Lance to, you know, get get him back. From a from a cost standpoint, just looking at the, the numbers, right now you go into this season and the, the cap hit for Trey Lance is going to be nine point three million dollars. You look at the sign the deal that that Deshaun Watson signed with the Browns last year and the way that they structured that whole thing. Deshaun Watson's cap hit last year in 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 uh, Cleveland was nine point four million. So the 49ers can get creative here. You talked about it earlier. You you send Trey Lance out there, you use maybe both of your first round picks and you know for 2024 and 2025. Maybe you use one of them and the second, third, whatever else. I don't know exactly what they have right now beyond that down the road. But you know, you give you give Baltimore a quarterback of the future that, that they maybe think is a quarterback of the future. You get your quarterback of the future, you give up some picks as a result. I, you know, I think that could work for the 49ers. Yeah, I, I think there are ways to do it. There are ways to get creative for sure. Surface level. It doesn't work, but I don't, I just, this doesn't feel like a 49er move to me. At least to me, it doesn't. I just, I don't know if Lamar Jackson is a Shanahan style quarterback. I don't know if that's what he wants at the quarterback position. I'd be curious to see. I, I mean, I think he should be. I think they absolutely should do whatever it takes to get Lamar Jackson, but I just don't. I don't see Shanahan making that move or even kicking the tires on that move. And maybe I'm wrong. I hope I am, but I just, I personally don't see it. Do you think, yeah. do you think Shanahan, this is a move that Shanahan would get his hands in and actually try to make? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is there's a couple, I have a couple of responses to that one. The first one is, you know, is it a 49ers kind of move? No, but you haven't won a Super Bowl in over 20, in almost 30 years. So yep. maybe you need to change yep. the way you're doing things a little bit. So that's the first one. The second one, in terms of going after him and, and doing a big move, what I'll say there is if the if the stories about the 49ers being interested in Matthew Stafford back in 2021, if those are true, then I think you go out and you go after a guy like this because they were they they recognized the need to, to improve that quarterback position and go all in. So go all in with with Lamar Jackson, who gives you he he's a lot he's a lot younger than Matthew Stafford was. He's only 26. In terms of like his ability to run and all those kind of things, his game does it fit with with Kyle Shanahan? Well, Shanahan, I don't I don't know when it was he said it. I think it might have been prior to the draft last year, or maybe it was back after the game when they played the Bills in 2020, even where he said, "If you can put together the perfect quarterback, it's Drew Brees with the running ability of, of Lamar Jackson." And you watch the way Lamar Jackson's played quarterback for for the Ravens. And it looks very similar to what what everything that Kyle Shanahan's tried to do here uh, in four of games over the last two years when he's had a quarterback in there who's a little bit more mobile in Trey Lance. Yeah, like it, it's it's kind of a perfect fit. And and I would say in terms of of Lamar Jackson and his throwing ability, you look at his throwing numbers. His throwing numbers are right there on par with Josh Allen. And you put that together with with Kyle Shanahan's ability to get guys wide open. You know, you add that to all these other all the playmakers that this offense has, and the fact that they just put up thirty points. It, you're looking at a team that should, you know, be favored to win the Super Bowl for sure. Yeah, you you definitely would, and I think, you know, I, I think there are ways. You know, I, I've seen seen some comments saying, "Well, then you can't keep Bosa," and I, that's completely untrue. I think you definitely can keep Bosa. There are, there are ways to structure these contracts to get really really tricky. And, you know, it means that you're going to have to get rid of guys eventually in a year or so, like Armstead and whatever, but who cares? <laughs> like, big deal. I, you know, that's, I, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to lose the Debo's and the Armsteads or maybe not re-sign the Iukes and continue to build through the draft or whatever it takes. Like, th those are the moves that are actually going to happen. Getting rid of, of Bosa or not being able to re-sign Bosa, you, you're definitely going to be able to do that. So I'm not. I'm not too worried about that at all. Yeah, you'd still be able to keep you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna keep your top end guys. That's that's always the way that this works in the NFL. You have your the NFL is built with guys at 
and then guys down here. And there's not very much of a middle class. And the 49ers, because of the way they are, they're kind of living a little bit more in the middle class, but they're starting to, to kind of change their way. And look at it this way. Another, another way to look at this whole quarterback situation, would you rather pay $45 million average annual value to Lamar Jackson, who is a proven NFL MVP, or pay $20 million to Trey Lance and two years under the fifth year option. That's what he's going to be. You know, it's, that's, that's going to be more than that by now. That's what it would have been for this year's class. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, the, the numbers here really don't, don't get tied up in the numbers. The, like the salary cap is a real thing, but when teams want players bad enough, they can find ways to make it happen. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing too, is when you just look at what wins in the NFL, you either need an elite quarterback or you need a very good quarterback who's inexpensive. Like that's that's it. You, all these guys th that are Giants are paying Daniel Jones, Saints are are paying Derek Carr, Seattle's paying Geno Smith. Those are mediocre quarterbacks that are getting way overpaid. That is not what wins in the NFL. That's not at all what wins. So now you can either go all in and pay a superstar in Lamar Jackson, or you can go the route they're going now, which could result in a Super Bowl, but you're going to need either Purdy to show that he's the guy or Lance to show that he's the guy and do it before they get expensive. That's the risk you're taking. So one of those guys might prove to be the guy or neither of them could prove to be the guy, but you've got a for sure thing out here in Lamar Jackson that is absolutely the guy is absolutely worth the money. So why not go for the for sure thing if you can actually make it happen? Yeah, ab absolutely. And Daniel, I mean, Daniel, Daniel Jones, Daniel freaking Jones made, got a, a four year, $160 million. Daniel freak. What the hell, what the heck has that guy done? He, 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 I mean, you know, he turns the ball over all the time, fumbles on his own and running the ball and stuff like that. And, you know, he's all right. He had, he had one good season, I guess this year, if you want to look at him this year, but uh, and come on, if you were to put him and, and Brock Purdy together, <laughs> I think Brock Purdy's performance over the second half of the year is more perform, more impressive than than Daniel Daniel Jones, you know. And so we're talking about spending five million dollars more for an MVP caliber quarterback. Uh, it's it's a no brainer for me. Well, and the other thing is this, you know, we we talked, I've been talking about the salary cap for a while now, and. You know, why you don't restructure guys like Eric Armstead and Trent Williams and some of these guys that are approaching 30. Well, when you have a quarterback that you plan to have for the next 10 years, shoot, you need money? Restructure him. Who cares? You're going to have him for the next 10 years. It's not a big deal. Next 10 or 12 years, no issue. Oh, we need money this year to go get free agents? We'll restructure Lamar Jackson because guess what? We still have another eight years with him. Hey, we have another seven years with him. We're going to do it again and again and again. And you can keep doing that for four or five seasons and kicking the can down the road. And it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. That's why, that's why I pointed to the, or, you know, at the beginning to the, to the contract that uh, Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes signed you. Right. Yeah. Because it was, it's, it's all, there's flexibility all over the place with that thing. They can, they can save money all over the place if they, if they need it, if they feel like they need to add somebody. So it, it again, for, you can, you can make it happen. And I agree with you 100%. As long as you structure these contracts in the right way in which you can start to, to do that. We've seen the 49ers and I, I mentioned Parag Rathay earlier. We've seen them do a good job with their higher end contracts of, of putting them in a way that allows them to go back and make adjustments to it, right? To help the cap situations and so on and so forth. There's six guys, their top six guys, their six top end guys on their team right now that they can go back to and uh, free up some cap space if they wanted to do that. So, uh, I think the fires can do it. And it's just about, again, is, is York serious enough in here to, to in, insert himself into this situation? Uh, and we'll see the direction that they go. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I hope they at least try. And yeah, I don't think Purdy or Lance should feel offended or hurt or any of those things. If they hear the 49ers are involved. I mean, this is a superstar quarterback. I'm sorry. If, if you can't, deal with the 49ers going after a guy like Lamar Jackson who is in his prime or about to reach his prime. I don't know what to tell you.